Being a woman is powerful. Today I'm here with Nadia Lopez, who is the founder and principal of Mott Hall Bridges Academy in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Nice to have you, Nadia. <laughs> um, you're a product of the New York City public school system. How did this prepare and impact you for your career today? So I just want to first and foremost say that I am a proud product of New York City public schools. Um, I got some of the best educational experiences in terms of teachers who really, really cared and valued children, especially children of color, coming from Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, um, having traveled to Fort Greene, Brooklyn, and then to Harlem for high school. I got a real sense of what it's like to be a true public school um, student. Um, and when I thought about creating a school, I thought about every one of the experiences that I had where there were teachers who were talented and capable of understanding my culture, understanding the neighborhood, and really understanding the needs of what a child in a community like Brooklyn or New York City at large needs in order to be successful in college. So, I mean, um, I wouldn't trade it in for the world, and I think that it gave me a world experience that it can't be compared to anything else. Right. Uh, so how do you feel about now the incoming gentrification? How do you feel that that will impact your school, your scholars, and then the overall environment of Brownsville? So in terms of gentrification, I think that what changes in the dynamics are at first the demographics, right? So you get a different landscape of the type of children who attend your school. Um, if you get parents who are either white, Asian, or whatever the mix that comes in, um, you then now have to cater to their culture and what their community needs are. Um, but in addition to that, in terms of what that means for my scholars is that gentrification changes also the, um, the cost of living. And so there's a lot of families who won't be able to afford to live in Brownsville and ultimately get pushed out because their property value goes up and landlords see that they're no longer a value and asset in their community. Um, but then you get these resources. And unfortunately, those who stayed and may have paved the way, who had gone through the struggle, don't actually get to um, get the fruits of all of that that comes with it. Um, so for me, I'm very mindful of it. I try to educate my families all the time. Just recently, um, the Garvey Village Houses, that's literally a block away from my school on Dumont, was sold for $100 million. Um, and Van Dyke Housing, which is part of the um, housing developments, they've begun to be sold off. The mayor made that decision last year. Um, so, you know, as much as I watch what's going on in the media, my families don't often know that. And so I try to explain to them that when things are sold, that means that there's gonna be a new change and that doesn't include you. Um, so I try to educate them as best as possible, um, whether it's around financial literacy, whether it's just advocacy, how do they stand for themselves and try to um, know their rights. And if the time comes that they have to transition, because um, that is a possibility, when you leave here, what is your legacy and what does that mean for the places you will go? Okay, and now since the rise of social media and everything's going viral, how do you think that technology can impact your scholars' learning, especially those that may be disengaged by the traditional styles of learning? So I think that social media um, has had a tremendous impact on all of our lives, and most of our news and information has come through social media. So usually in the morning I wake up and I look at Twitter and I see what's trending. Um, and a lot of the uh, stories that I read, whether it's news articles, um, magazines, blogs, it really comes from online. So in my school, we are a STEAM focused school, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. We do have a social media etiquette class. Um, we teach it to all of our eighth graders, and I also teach a class as well periodically um, in which I teach my scholars how to be savvy. We as a school have a social media presence um, through Mount Hall Bridges Academy, whether it's our school website, our fa um, Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, we're on all of it. And myself, um, under the Lopez effect, I have 
all these handles in which I communicate with people. And the reason why I do it is because I want my scholars to understand the importance of how they present themselves to the public. One, um, you become a brand and how people view you and how people um, see your value is connected to what you put out into the world. Um, three, in terms of a school community, they can become global just being by within the confines of Brownsville, right? They get to have experiences with other children throughout the world. Um, you can use Skype, you can use Google Hangouts. Um, you can tell your own story. So we have our own magazine, an online magazine that's called Brownsville Brilliance, and it's um, in collaboration with Sarita Gates through um, one of her initiatives, which is The Score. And the reason why I did that because there were no positive stories about Brownsville. And if you don't see it, you're in a time and in a space that says you can create your own. So I don't have to ask your permission. If it doesn't exist, you can create your own blog, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can create a YouTube channel. So teaching kids today to be savvy, to be entrepreneurs. I even have an entrepreneurship class that my kids have to take, or every seventh grader has to take that, is because um, I don't want them to be stagnant. I want them to be competitive, and I want them to have their own brand and value in this world. Thank you, Nadia, for joining us today, and happy Women's History Month. Thank you, you too. Thank you.